Hey guys, it's TTL back with another video for you. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at something a bit cheaper. There's been a lot of comments uh, in the uh, forums recently and on Facebook and the uh, YouTube video comments about bringing some of the cheaper coolery stuffs back. Now, uh, it did kind of work out kind of nicely because uh, Cooler Master have just updated their Hyper 212. It's now called the Hyper 212X. Doesn't look that much difference, but there's uh, been some uh, tweaks in the engineering and the build quality on this one. So I thought it was about time that we uh, broke loose and we did something that those of you out there that haven't got mummy and daddy's credit card or have kids and all that type of stuff, might actually be looking at within a real serious consideration to buy it. So let's move on and get this unboxed. Okay, so Boxio, El Boxio. One of the things we do need to talk about is um, when, once we do get it open, because I did want to open it so you show, it's all obviously really nice to be able to see what's inside. So we do it rather swiftly and we get down to the cooler itself. Now one of the things, because um, uh, they send you like a little pack with these things and it's got exclusive X vent technology. The vents are placed at 45 degree angles around each heat pipe. So let's have a look. Oh yeah, look. Now I'm not gonna even attempt to get my camera to try and focus in there, but you're gonna get the idea about here and what's going on at the top. So as we're looking around and it's got patented V-shaped fin array is what they're saying. And then uh, CDC technology, there's four con uh, continuous direct contact heat pipes. Are there? Oh yeah, look. You can ooh, pull that off and you can see that you've got the heat pipes here and they are. I'm not going to say they're mirror smooth because that would be a total lie. You can feel that there's a bit of a, a brushed effect when they've been machined, but it is very smooth. And they also say there's an optimised fin design. There's a lot of stuff that they do say in these uh, things, but essentially it's a £30 Cooler Master uh, 212 cooler that they have updated the engineering and the build quality a little bit. But to the, uh, the novice eye, it's not going to look a great deal different. Now you do get your bracket, which will do AMD and Intel. One of the things in the box that I really liked, obviously you get your instructions. Um, the, the mount is like a scissor mount now, which does make things a lot easier. Sometimes trying to get these to sit properly and sit between the two can be a total nightmare. You get all your screws in this little blister pack, but, and this is something that I will bring up in the conclusion that I do like, you do get an extra set of mounts put another fan on if you would wish. Now we are still quite unusually for this cooler at least still testing on a 2011 based system uh, it's just because uh, it means all of our graphs still um, uh, match up. We might be changing our kit shortly but anyway we need to get it in the 2011 based rig and you simply just add the shorter standoffs into the uh, back plate that's standardly fit on the 2011 boards and then quite simply get your cooler with the hold down, get it in the right position and then pretty much you can just put that down there. Obviously you need to put thermal paste on and screw the, the, the fans down, uh, the fans down, screw the screws down. If you were to be putting this on 1155 motherboard, 1151, 1150, any of those, essentially all you do is you have a back plate and then you have the standoffs and the standoffs get put through the motherboard holes and then you have the back plate on the other side of the board is the best way I can explain it and then you just end up doing these screws up so if you imagine that the motherboard was sandwiched in between those that would be what we were aiming for with those it was actually it's a fairly simple um, one there's a good explanation good diagram uh, manual that you can follow so all we need to do is have a look at that but anyway what we're going to do now is get this all bolted down and then we'll come back shortly after Okay, so from this angle, what we can see is it does actually fit in the CPU socket area of the board really nicely. We could easily get a uh, fourth stick of memory in here if we wanted to. We, <coughs> I have tried, <coughs> excuse me, have tried moving it over. So you can get them in, but I've, I've left them in the uh, standard um, A1, B1, C1, D1 slots. 
So we've got that in there. What we can also say is the height of the cooler itself is about 167 to 168 millimeters. If you've got this though, because it's got 120 millimeter fan, if you have a 120 millimeter fan at the back of your case, it should fit just for the beginners out there. But just go and check and see what the clearances are. This case that we're using has got a 140 mil fan at the back and you can see that there's a gargantuan amount of room back there. So really now it's time to test in. Okay then, so we've got it in, we've got it fitted. And the other thing I want to say is right now as well, it's at 12 volts. Now it's not the quietest thing in the world at 12 volts because it's running at 1700 RPM. That is the maximum that it can do, but you can turn it right back to 600 RPM as well, depending on uh, the load that you want to put on it. And if you do want to turn it right back at 600 RPM, it is nigh on silent because to be honest with you it is running really quietly if you're watching a film or something like that i'd be spot on but we're kind of going into the conclusion side of things we did our testing at 12 volts because it uh doesn't come with any kind of fan speed adjuster in it and we always then run it at 12 volts trying to set fixed rpms can kind of trip us over because you then get like coolers that are that are lower than it or can't go as high than that so it, it's just the way that we've always done it it's also easier then for you to understand that if it's running at maximum RPMs and you want to turn it back, temperatures will go up. So you can kind of use your own noggin to be able to go in it. Now, I'm going to show you the complete graph for our testing. Now, it is massive, but don't worry, I will zoom you in. The most important thing here is you can go and have a look at these graphs on the Overclock 3D website and you can see all of the coolers that we've tested and there is an awful lot of them in there. Now, one of the things we do do is uh, with our baseline test, uh, what we actually do is an undervolt because you can undervolt your CPU. Uh, auto just means it's the voltage is doing it what it wants and it's always above what the CPU really needs unless you really lose the silicon lottery. So with the undervolt, what we've been able to do is get our CPU, which is a 3960X when, we t t uh, when we're testing CPUs at the moment, or at least at the moment, because it's going to change. But uh, we can get it running at stock at 1.1 volts. So uh, we do manage to drop the heat requirements right down and still get a good stock test. Uh, at the stock volts, which is 1.25 volts, we can actually get it running at 4 gigahertz as well, which is the next step up in the line. We do actually do 4.4 and 4.6, uh, but this cooler it couldn't cope with the amount of heat that uh, you know a massive CPU was um, going to go. And to be honest with you, if you ended up with a really expensive CPU like this, I, I would say that you would need a better cooler, but that's not the fault of this. You wouldn't be bolting a 30 pound cooler onto a really expensive CPU like this anyway, or I don't think you should be, unless you are going to be running it at stock and undervolting it and everything like that, then it can cope. As you'll see when we zoom in on the graphs. So uh, with this one, you can see it's actually not at the bottom, which in itself is a really good thing, but because it's undervolted, it can actually trip up some of the bigger coolers because you can see that we've got the Alpenfron K2 at 12 volts, so maximum fan speeds, performed worse. Now, that's basically because, to be honest with you, it was just kind of sat there twiddling its thumbs. Once you start pumping more heat in it, that cooler was well away with itself and literally goes to the part of the grass that you would expect it would do. It's just that really, the 212X at this point, with the amount of heat that was going in CPU, was actually working really well. It's in its comfort zone, Whereas with the uh, K2, it, it wasn't it wasn't enough heat. It's probably the best way I can explain it. But you can see it's it's done really well there. And the, also the thing to look at is that the Cooler Master Iceberg 120, which 120 millimeter water cooler, at these settings again, you can see that it's actually a little bit warmer. And that's delta temperatures as well. So delta temperatures, you take the maximum temperature and any minus. The temperature of the room away from it to uh, um, allow for any environmental differences and that gives you your delta. And we move on like I said up to four gigahertz with uh, stock volts because it was 1.25 volts but manually set it does tumble down the graph a little bit more but again you can see that it's not right at the bottom and you do have the Alpine von Matterhorn pure at the bottom but then again point proven the Alpine von K2 even with low fans then is performing a little bit better. So uh, then we need to talk 
about uh, awards and we'll discuss why. Now you're probably thinking that I'm going to give it uh, like a silver award or a bronze award because it's cheap. Well you'd be wrong because it's actually gold award worthy and it's actually value for money award worthy as well. I personally think that when we test it on uh, this CPU it's because we test all of the coolers the same. What you need to consider is that if you were running this on an i3, any i3 or like a uh, one of the AMD Athlons, the quad cores, something like that, it would perform really well and it'd be a lot more in its comfort zone and it'd probably run a lot quieter as well. You're not going to be bolting this up to what was at launch a thousand pound AMD uh, hex core CPU um, and then even trying to overclock. It's just not you know made for that. But for a lower end system um, uh, at stock or with some minor overclocks, it's absolutely perfect. And I would go as far as to say this is the cooler that uh, if you've got an Intel cooler, this is kind of the cooler or the range of coolers. Do you know what I mean? Around this kind of thing. I'm not saying this is the one you've got to go and buy before people go mental. But this is kind of the starting pack um, uh, cooler for me. Uh, the 212 is one that uh, gets recommended all over the internet and you can always see why but what they've done with the 212X is just refine it a little bit, kind of looks the same but they've done as much as they possibly can do to get the best performance out of it at an incredible price point. So like I said if you're building a rig and you don't want to use the Intel cooler this is the type of thing or this is the thing I would be saying to you definitely needs to be in your consideration or to be honest with you it would be personally this would be the one I would go and grab so even if it's a rig for your mum or your mate or something like that but also even if it's something for you and you're thinking to yourself I don't want to spend a lot of money because well I haven't got a lot of money but I want to make a really silent rig and I'm going to have an i3 this can be perfect with it your temperatures obviously if you run it silently will be a lot more than if you have the fan spinning more but it's not going to be to a point that it's uncomfortable or anything like that or you know unsafe so that's the other thing you need to think lower fan rpms means higher temperatures uh, but less noise so you just have to play that kind of balancing game with it and with a 600 rpm to a 1700 rpm fan on there you do get a lot of choice and you just have to find that uh, healthy balance that you are happy with uh, within the rest of your rig the other thing that I really like with this as well is it does come with a set of uh, brackets so that you can add a second fan later on if you want to. And the other thing to remember is if you buy it and you don't like this fan that's on there, but you may already have like a much better fan kicking around at home, uh, you can just change it and bang it on there and it really won't matter. If you do add a second fan, one of the things I would say is it's not really going to bring your real top end temperatures down a great deal. But what it is going to mean is that at lower RPMs, it will keep the temperatures down a little bit more. It's basically, uh, it's just keeps the airflow going through. I mean, normally what I would say is when you go push-pull, it's really more about being able to run uh, lower fan RPMs and achieve the same temperatures. And it does work, it will work with this as well. Although I haven't had time to do all those tests. And to be honest with you, with each test taking us about 45 minutes to an hour, changing fans and then all that type of stuff, we would be here all day. It's something that you guys can go and have fun with depending on the fans and stuff you have at home. There's going to be no point us sticking a uh, pair of fans on this that cost the same price as the cooler itself, is there? So anyway, those are all things, little tidbits for you to take home. So to recap, for 30 quid, it's an absolute bargain and performs admirably considering the ridiculous uh, CPU that we bolt it to but obviously just to reiterate we do bolt it to the same cooler that we do all of the other ones so even the NHD 15 has been on this uh, so and, and to be honest with you like I said has done really well will be better suited to slightly lower end systems but you would expect that for a 30 pound cooler anyway so uh, uh, a really nice update to what was an already a very well respected and great performing budget cooler so Congratulations on the Gold Award and the Value for Money Award. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. Ding!